Todoroki stands up to Darby, Midoriya gets taken, and Himiko Toga doesn't want to fight? Let's talk about all of this and more as we dive right into the newest chapter of My Hero Academia. <laughs> So My Hero Academia Chapter 345 is finally out. And with it, we get to see the result of the hero's plan to divide and conquer the villains, as well as the beginning of many fated and some surprising showdowns. But before I begin talking about this chapter, I'm first going to go into a quick summary of what happened last time. And as usual, don't forget to Detroit smash that like button and slide on into that subscribe button's DMs to hit that notification bell. In the last chapter, we saw the best bros for life, Detective Tsukuuchi and Papa All Might pull a Wade from Kim possible and explain to Class 1A what the sitch is with the hero's plan in the upcoming battle. They explained the whole plan of them using Twinkie Boy Aoyama as a triple agent to lure All for One out, and they also brought in Class 1A's resident step bro Hitoshi Shinzo, who I'm sure there is a metric ton of new fan art of, both sexy and non-sexy if you know what I mean, due to his slick new hero costume to use his improved quirk to help execute their idea. After Shinzo explained that he can now make people talk with his brainwashing quirk, which would be an utterly terrifying ability if he wasn't the most wholesome bean there is, and how he's going to use it on Aoyama's parents to bypass All For One's lie detection quirk, the story briefly cut over to the real protagonist of the series. You can't argue this chapter was titled Stars because he's the fucking star of the series, Nato Monoma, who is alongside Aizawa and Vlad King outside of Kurugiri's cell. Here, Aizawa asked Monoma to copy and master Dead Loud Cloud's warp quirk, RIP, in just a few days so they can use it to surprise the villains. In hearing this, however, Monoma claimed mastering a quirk in that short of a time frame is madness. So Vlad told Monoma, but you're the star of the show. To which Monoma replied, you bet your bottom jaw I am. And so he mastered the quirk. And I mean, that's legit what happened. The story then went back to the present where we saw Dobby try to cremate everyone, but he was stopped by Shoto who told Dobby to stop being a bitch. And then the heroes trapped the villains in mechanical prisons and Monoma used used the warp gate quirk to try and separate them. Which, as Jeron Neo pointed out in the comments, is exactly what the villains did at the USJ. And this is where chapter 345 picks up. This chapter opens up with a group of villains caught and confused inside one of the heroes' moving iron prisons. We see that also inside this cage is none other than Himiko Toga, who in a state of desperation asks her fellow villains to break them free as quickly as possible, as she begins to think about Midoriya. And immediately after this, we see that some villains actually managed to destroy their cage before being sent through the warp gates and have started to fight back against the heroes. Dobby, being one of these villains that escaped mocks the heroes by saying that they couldn't even hold him back for more than three seconds. However, just as he says this, Shoto alongside Tenyida and Moe Kamiji, aka Vernon, appear in front of him. And Shoto exclaims that those three seconds were more than enough, as he begins to blast Dobby and the other villains backward with his flames. Now, it's also interesting to point out here that when Dobby sees Shoto and the others, they are all silhouetted out, making them look more like monsters instead of heroes. Which not only makes everyone look badass in my opinion, but it also could be a visualization of how Dobby views heroes. But anyway, following this brief confrontation, all of the heroes begin to work in unison to push back all of the remaining and free villains towards the portals. And this plan ultimately works without a hitch. The villains get separated and the heroes divide into their planned groups. As the final villains are being pushed, Monoma begins to maniacally laugh. Which is 100% in character as he delightfully declares that now he is the one pulling all of the strings. We also see a hero very similar both in look and in quirk to that of Crust, the former number six hero who died in the previous war, who is fighting with one of the generals of the Liberation Front and announcing that they also have a plan to deal with Shigaraki's decay. With the main villains all teleported away, the heroes then rush to enter their designated portals. Bakugo excitedly calls out to Midoriya that it's time to go. But just as this dynamite duo are about to enter the portal together, a strange rope-like object shoots out from another nearby portal, wraps around Midoriya's arm, and pulls him in, ultimately separating the duo. With everyone dispersed, both heroes and villains alike, Monoma gets rid of all of his portals. And Fatgum and Aoyama, who were tasked by All Might to stay behind, begin to arrest any small-time straggler villains who may have been left behind. So it looks like both Fatgum and Aoyama 
Yama are currently out of the main fight and safe. All Might then instructs Monoma to return to where Aizawa is so they can officially start phase two of the operation. Which makes me think that Monoma might end up copying Aizawa's quirk and be vital in taking down either All For One or Shigaraki. I mean, he did say in the previous chapter how vital Aizawa was in the previous war. Plus, Monoma as a self-proclaimed side character using both Aizawa's quirk, another UA student who thought he wasn't good enough, and in a sense, Obero's quirk, the person who motivated Aizawa to believe in himself to win this war, is kind of poetic. But anyway, as soon as Monoma teleports away, we not only get to see that All For One has been teleported to Gunga Mountain, but we also get to see the heroes charged with taking him down. His team most notably consists of Endeavor, Hawks, who looks like he has most of his feathers back, Tokoyami, Kamui Woods, Pixie Bob and Tiger of the Wild Wild Pussycats, and Shishido. Upon arriving through the portal, Endeavor announces that they know the goo teleportation quirk used by All For One is a worse version of Kuru Giri's warp gate, and that not only can it only cover short distances, but it also can't transport the user, meaning All For One can't teleport away. Endeavor also comments on how the new UA barrier improvements were made with this in mind, and he declares that now it's time for All For One to get what he deserves. In hearing all of this, All For One admits that he does admire the hero's plan, but he also admits that splitting the heroes at a time like this is a bit risky, and he wonders if bringing one for all face to face with Tomura Shigaraki is really a good idea for the heroes. Following this, the story then cuts away, and we get to see where each of the main heroes and villains have ended up. First, we see Shoto facing off against Dabi in the most Jojo-esque way, I mean, come on, that's gotta be a Jojo's reference, in front of All Might statue at Kamino Ward, while Ida, who is also there, is off fighting a Nomu in the background. Shigaraki and Bakugo are teleported to a section of UA, which is now floating high up in the sky, looks like May's idea worked, and is being protected either by a force field or by denim. As it turns out, best genius has been waiting on the floating island for them to arrive. So yeah, apparently Best Genius is one of the main characters in the final fight against Tomura Shigaraki, and the plan to counter Shigaraki's decay and All For One's teleportation is to put Shigaraki on an island and just launch it into the fucking sky. Gotta say, props for the ingenuity. However, when Bakugo teleports in, he does inform Best Genius that there is a problem. Midoriya has been taken away. And with this, chapter 345 comes to an end, as the story cuts to some sort of water show stadium where we see Midoriya, Uraraka, Froppy, and Gang Orca facing off against Nomu's and Himiko Toga, who is holding onto the wire that pulled Midoriya away as Midoriya begins to wonder why his danger sense hasn't activated. Overall, this was a pretty good, I'll bet pretty short chapter. I mean, all that really happened was the hero separated the villains and Midoriya got pulled away through the wrong portal. Although, I will say Midoriya's danger sense not going off when being confronted by Toga is quite interesting. Could it be that she really doesn't want to hurt Midoriya anymore and instead wants something else? Or is it that she doesn't intend to hurt him until she asks him the same question she asked Ochako? What do you want to do to me? Shoto facing off against Dabi was awesome and I'm sure their eventual confrontation will be spectacular and I was genuinely surprised to see best genus support supposedly being the one to help Midori and Bakugo fight Shigaraki. Wouldn't have been my first choice. But hey, maybe now we'll actually get to see Bakugo and his mentor fight side by side. But let me know what you think of this chapter. If you liked this video, don't forget to leave a like and comment what you think is going to happen next. For more My Hero content like this, subscribe to the Lunchtime Crew. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Plus Ultra.